Hey everyone, Dr. Shake here from The Dentalist. In the last video, we talked about artificial teeth, which is chapter 15 from McCabe. Today, we're going to talk about chapter 16, which is impression materials. Before we dive in, just a reminder, if you're struggling to understand dental materials in a way that sticks, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one coaching for students who want full clarity and exam confidence. Sign up using the link in the description below. And if you're not sure yet, you can book a call, book a free call to talk it through. Also, don't forget to join the Dentalist Gold email list to receive bonus notes and updates and everything that you might need. All right, let's get started with the topic. So what are impression materials? Impression materials are used to record the shape, size, and details of oral structures like teeth, gingiva, and edentulous ridges. Once an impression is made, it serves as a negative mold that can be poured with dental stone to create a working model. These models are then used to fabricate restorations, prostheses, orthodontic appliances, or simply for diagnostic records. So, the accuracy and properties of impression materials are critical to successfully um, or perform any dental treatment that's needed. So we'll talk about the classification of impression materials first. First of all, you should know that they're classified uh, according to elasticity. So there's elastic impression materials. These materials can stretch or deform during removal from the mouth and then return to the original shape. This is essential when taking impressions in areas with undercuts, like around the teeth. Um, examples of this, this type of material would include alginate, agar, elastomers like polyethers and silicones. And then there's non-elastic impression materials. These do not recover their shape after deformation. They're suitable for edentulous ridges where there are no significant undercuts. Examples of this would be impression compound, zinc oxide eugenol, and impression plaster. The other way to classify impression materials is by, their, by the setting mechanism. Um, so there's reversible impression materials. These materials are basically set by physical changes such as cooling. Um, an example of this is agar, which is heated to a liquid and then becomes a solid again upon cooling. These can be reused by heat reheating again. Okay. Then there's a reversible impression materials. So reversible impression material is only one, which is agar. And so the irreversible materials are basically set by chemical reactions. Once set, they cannot be returned to their original state. Examples of this would be all the other impression materials except agar, like alginate, which is irreversible hydrocolloid, and then silicones and polyethers. Another way to classify impression materials is by viscosity. So there are low viscosity like light body materials which are used in syringes to flow into fine detail areas like gingival margins. And then there is medium viscosity that is monophase and can be used in both trays and syringes. Then there is high viscosity which is heavy body putty that provides bulk support in trays. It is basically used in two stage impressions. So this classification is basically crucial in crown and bridge impressions where multiple viscosities are used for accuracy and support. Another way to classify impression materials is by its hydrophilicity for the love of water. So hydrophilic materials like these materials can flow over moist surfaces and are better for capturing details in a wet field. For example, alginate polyether are really good materials with hydrophilic properties. Hydrophobic materials, on the other hand, repel moisture and may cause voids if not handled correctly. Most silicones are hydrophobic unless modified. Another way to classify impression materials would be by their clinical use. So for dentulous patients, elastic materials are needed to accommodate undercuts. And for edentulous patients, both elastic and non-elastic may be used depending on the anatomy and technique. So mucostatic versus mucocompressive. 
So what is mucostatic and mucocompressive? Mucostatic materials are basically those that do not compress tissues. For example, zinc oxide eugenol. While mucocompressive materials record tissues under function or compression. Okay. Now let's talk about the properties of impression materials. The first one is accuracy. The ability of the material to reproduce the fine surface details. This depends on its flow, viscosity, and wetting properties. Higher accuracy is crucial in fixed prosthodontics like crowns and bridges. The other property is dimensional stability. It refers to basically how well the material retains its dimensions after setting. Materials like alginate tend to shrink due to water loss, which is called a cinerisis, while silicones remain stable for longer. Elastic recovery is also an important property. After being removed from undercuts, the material must be able to bounce back to its original shape without distortion. Polyethers and addition silicones have excellent recovery. Another property is setting contraction. Polymerizing materials like silicones undergo slight shrinkage during setting. This can compromise fit if not compensated by proper technique or tray selection. We'll talk about that further if you want to understand that. Um, then there's tear strength, which refers to resistance against tearing during removal, especially in thin areas like gingival sulcus. Polyethers have lower tear strength. Addition silicones are stronger. Then there's wettability, which uh, explains how well the material spreads over moist tissues. Better wettability leads to fewer voids and better surface detail. Then there's detail reproduction, um, which is measured by the material's ability to record fine lines um, like 20 microns or less. Now let's talk about the working and setting time. So impression material must allow enough time for proper mixing, loading, and seeding without rushing. Materials with fast setting time reduce chair time, but they demand precision. Shelf life and storage stability is also another important property. The material should remain usable over time without separating, drying out, or reacting prematurely. So the manipulative variables that you should know about. First, we should talk about the mixing method. Hand mixed materials can trap bubbles, whereas auto mix systems are more consistent. Then there's tray selection, uh, which basically affects pressure and support. Custom trays reduce material thickness and distortion. Temperature and humidity is also another factor that can accelerate or delay setting reaction. Important during summer or in non-air conditioned clinics. Adhesives. These are basically required with elastomeric impression materials to ensure bonding between tray and material. Another important aspect is disinfection. Materials must be compatible with disinfectants and maintain stability after spraying or immersion. Clinical considerations that we should know are material selection depends on types of prosthesis, patient cooperation, presence of moisture or bleeding, and then of course the cost and availability. For example, alginate for study models is good enough. Then there's addition silicones for a crown and bridge and zinc oxide eugenol or impression compound for complete dentures. Then in tray selection, stock trays are readily available but less accurate. Custom trays reduce thickness of material and improve consistency. Perforated trays actually help in retention of alginate. Tissue management is also an important factor when taking impressions, especially for crowns and bridges. So retraction cords or gels are used to expose margins mostly. Hemostatic agents are used to control bleeding for better impressions. Then impression techniques is also another factor. 
So putty wash impression techniques uh, is basically a two stage in which initial putty set is taken and then it's followed by the light body. Then there is single stage dual viscosity in which simultaneous use of heavy and light body is done. Then there is functional impression technique that's used for edentulous cases using tissue conditioners. Cross infection control is also an important factor. This infection is basically mandatory to prevent lab contamination. Materials are sprayed or dipped in disinfectant for 10 minutes and then rinsed. Always use disinfectant compatible with the impression material. Let me know if you want to know more about the disinfectants that we use for uh, the impression materials. Now let's talk about common exam questions. What property ensures that an impression doesn't tear during removal? It's the higher tear strength. Now, which material is most dimensionally stable over time? It's addition silicone, PVS. Which impression material is most suitable for detailed crown margins in a wet environment? That would be polyether due to hydrophilicity and accuracy. But it's hardly used anymore. So yeah, just for the sake of it, you should know. And then what's the main drawback of alginate? Main drawback is poor dimensional stability due to water loss. So to summarize, we talked about impression materials that are classified by elasticity, setting reaction, viscosity, and their use. Ideal properties include accuracy, dimensional stability, elastic recovery, and wettability. The clinical success depends on correct tray selection, tissue control, and of course, disinfection. If you need help mastering this topic or any topic from dental materials, you should join my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. It's a four weeks of live Zoom sessions, exam prep, and personalized support. Sign up using the link in the description. If you're still unsure, you can also book a free call to ask your questions first. And then you can uh, go along with the coaching and make sure to join the dentalist gold email list for bonus resources and early access to study notes. Like this video if it helped and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out any videos coming up next. That's it for today, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Take care till we meet again.